So the first thing to do to make the pie is to make the crust. So I've already put the flour and the salt in there. And I like to use a pastry cutter, one of these things to make it. So I just mix up the salt and the flour first by themselves, just kind of like that. And then you add in the Crisco shortening. And there we go. And the butter, which I put in in like tablespoon size pieces about, you know, I just do kind of like slices and just put it in there. piece that's not part of it okay so then you just kind of work it all together with your pastry cutter if you don't have a pastry cutter you can use a fork it's just a lot easier with the pastry cutter but if you're someone who doesn't do who doesn't do a lot of baking it would make sense you know to just use a fork now it's got this good crumbly consistency so you can add the water one tablespoon at a time I usually add like four to start with and then go from there and I just mix with a spatula at this point. And you might need a slight bit more flour, I mean more flour, more water than the recipe calls for, but, um, if you do, you need to add it like in teaspoons. Once you use all the recipe, all the recipe, all the water the recipe calls for, add it in, start adding it in teaspoons because you really don't want the dough to be sticky. Okay, a bit more. Add the rest of it now. That's everything that the recipe calls for, so let's see if we can get this together and how it turns out. Okay, so this looks pretty good to me. It's, there's still some sticking in the bottom, but it's um, into a ball really nicely and it's good and flaky, you can see. So this is gonna be perfect. So once you've made the pie crust, you need to just let it sit and chill in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. 30 minutes to an hour, two hours, something like that, it's perfect. So for this recipe, I'm going to be using um, some frozen mixed vegetables and so that doesn't come with potatoes in it and we like potatoes in the chicken pot pie so I'm gonna be adding some of these gold potatoes they're like um, Yukon Golds these are not ones I grew myself but the ones I grew myself we already used them all up and so I just peel them and chop them into bite-sized bits like pieces you know and then I boil them so now I'm just gonna boil the potatoes um, it depends on how big you chop them and kind of what kind of potato, but maybe like 20 minutes. Just do it until when you stick a fork in it, it's tender and they'll be ready then. Next step is rolling out the pie crust to get the bottom crust. So the recipe I shared for the crust is a double crust, meaning it makes a top and bottom or two bottoms. For this, it's the top and bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do is take some flour and you can just do it on your clean countertop if you want, but I like to put down this freezer paper. And then you just sprinkle um, some flour so it doesn't stick. And then you half the dough, take half of the ball. I just take a knife and cut it in half. I don't know, is that, yeah, that's kind of in the screen. Sorry, the freezer paper's trying to roll up on me. Just cut it in half. And then put the second half back in the fridge and we'll roll out the bottom crust first. Okay, so I tried to just kind of flour this, spread out the flour and I put this, made this one into a more of its own ball. And then I'm gonna put, just take some of the flour down there and put it on the rolling pin. And then just roll this out, um, try to get it as round as you can. And you do need to kind of like keep moving it so that it doesn't, that'll help it not stick and that'll help you keep it round as well. And so get it so that it's, you know, fits your pie dish. And I will come back when I've rolled it all out. So the easiest way I found to move this into the pie dish is to kind of roll it up onto the rolling pin 
and then transfer it. So I just kind of, this is partially why the freezer paper is helpful too. Careful that it's not sticking too much here. And if it is like this piece, you can just kind of carefully peel it off and then just kind of get some flour on the back because it's pretty sticky over here. Um, just keep kind of rolling it up on there. And once you have enough of it, you can kind of just lift it if it's not super sticky and drape it over your pie dish. Then if we move this more in screen better, then you can just kind of move it around so that it, you know, is more centered. Mine's obviously off some. And mine's not perfectly round, so that's okay. I can take pieces away from, like, cut the edges and move them over to other places. Mine's never perfect, but it always tastes delicious. Okay, so there's two options, really, for the bottom crust. You can either, I mean, you'd pretty it up, but you can either cook it first, then put the filling, or leave it raw, put the filling, put the raw top crust on, and cook the whole thing at once. Personally, I like to pre-cook the bottom crust because I find that it makes it, um, it doesn't take as long to cook the whole thing, and it makes sure that the bottom crust doesn't end up doughy. Okay, so that's about got it. Like I say, it's not the prettiest, but it doesn't matter for the bottom crust. So I will be pre-cooking mine. So you have to do that at 400 for 14 to 15 minutes. Keep an eye on it because you don't want it to get too dark. But um, at this point, if you want, you can like draw symbols, sigils, whatever you want. But you definitely need to poke some holes in it. So it doesn't just, to and including the sides, you don't need to do the edge, but the sides too. So that it doesn't just totally um, like puff up. And it'll be perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in the oven and move on to the filling. Now for the starting of the filling, we're gonna need a fourth of an onion finely chopped. So I just kind of cut it in half and half again. And then, Chop it from there. I don't think I need to show you how to chop an onion. I'm pretty sure you know how to do that. It's a little hard to film with a stove, but I'm doing my best. So the first thing we want to do is on medium heat, you want to melt four tablespoons of butter. So we put that in and you probably can't really even, yeah, you can't really even see into the pot, but um, it's melting. So shouldn't take too long, but then we're going to saute the onions I chopped and in the butter and just kind of until they're translucent usually takes about three minutes. So one, Okay, so the butter's melted, so in go the onions. I wish I could get a better view, but I don't have one of those like top-down camera mounts so that I could just show you straight down. So um, once the onions are in, you just kind of stir them around and pretty much just keep stirring for like three minutes until they're kind of golden brown, and or not golden brown, but until they're like translucent -y. And they'll go from white to being a little bit more brownish color, but you don't want to burn them. Okay, so they're getting there. Trying to get it to focus and stuff and have good lighting over here is a little difficult, especially because it's got the smoke coming, or steam coming out too. So they're about ready. So we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay, so now we're gonna sprinkle in the flour to start making the roux. And I'm doing this a tablespoon at a time. So I sprinkle it in, and then I just kind of mix it in with the onion and butter mixture. I really hope y'all can at least sort of see what I'm doing. So it's best if you don't really tip the pot like that, but um, you know, trying to show y'all. So just add it a tablespoon at a time and mix it in. And this is creating a roux, which is meaning like a thickener, so that when you add the chicken stock later, the filling will end up thickening, and not just be super runny like a chicken noodle soup. So this, the ratio of flour to butter is gonna mean that this is gonna be like a paste. So it, 
the butter will soak up all the flour and it will be a paste that you'll need to cook for a couple minutes. But you, again, you don't want it to burn. So I'll try to, let me get it all mixed in and then I'll try to show y'all. Let's see if I can get this off the tripod. Okay, so here it is. Um, I know the lighting over here isn't great, but you just keep mixing it, mix it. Once it's like this, you want to just mix it for like maybe a minute or two before you can start adding in your chicken broth. Okay. So you add the chicken broth in a little at a time, just a little bit, and try to kind of mix it in so that, oh gosh, so that it like, I don't know, you know, mixes. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit more in. And I know y'all can't see good. I'm sorry. Um, just going to keep adding in. It can be good to use a whisk sometimes at this point. But uh, this works fine for me for now. So just keep mixing it. Then you can kind of just add the rest in. And then this is really where a whisk can be because you don't want clumps. And adding it a little at a time is what really can help prevent the clumps from forming. So at this point, I am going to use a whisk. And okay, uh, so it's not going to be perfectly smooth because there is onion in there. But, um, sorry about the noise. This pot has, like, ridges on the bottom. But you want it to be, you don't want chunks of flour. Next step is to add in our milk. I'm going to add about half of it. Mix it in and then add the other half. And the next step is to let this cook for a little while. You need to continue stirring it, not like constantly, but every couple minutes or so because you don't want the, um, sorry, you don't want the stuff to burn on the bottom. So just um, leave it uncovered and let it cook for a few minutes until it starts thickening. Okay, so this has thickened up good now. So the next step is to add the filling stuff into it. So first thing I'm going to add is the chicken. This is pre-cooked chicken that I cooked in the crock pot. And then I just kind of shredded it with a fork. So I am adding that in there. Mix that in. And I do have it on low now, the heat. So I don't want anything to burn, stick to the bottom or anything. Then I'm gonna add in the potatoes that I boiled and drained. They've just been sitting aside, waiting for their day. And then I have the frozen mixed vegetables. I'm adding those in. Then I'm just gonna mix all that in. And the vegetables have been sitting out for a while, maybe an hour, but they're still kind of frozen. So, um, and the chicken's cold at this point because it was actually in the fridge because I cooked it yesterday. So, um, there's that. Now I'm going to grab the spices. So, I have the dried basil and the garlic salt in there. Just add it in and mix in. And then you just do salt and pepper to taste. And then you can... Set this, once it's all mixed in, you can set this, off, take it off the heat and set it aside. When it's done, it's time to pour the filling in. So this is probably the simplest part. You literally just dump it in and kind of spread it out on top. Okay, so I rolled out the top pie crust, same way I did the other one, put it over the rolling pin and just draped it on top here. Now with this one, what I do is I take the, um, excess pie crust and I just kind of flip it over on top and some places where there's like a whole lot like right there I might take it off actually I can put it right there and I just kind of flip it up for now and I'm going to show you how to crimp the edges in just a moment you can kind of move pieces if there's places where there's less if you want to 
or you can just take it off and like cook it separately. So kind of flip this up and then to crimp it together, you can use your fingers or you can use a fork and just kind of go on the edges like this. It is a little bit harder when the bottom crust is already cooked because of course it's not gonna be dough to dough contact, but you just go all the way around and I'll be right back. So now you cut slits in the top to let the heat and steam escape. You can cut them in whatever pattern you want really. I usually just kind of do like an X or a cross, whatever, and then some little ones like this. So then if you pre-baked the bottom pie crust, um, you'll want to pay attention because that was at 400 and this needs to be cooked now at 375 So if you want to you can like do the beaten egg and wash over it like brush it with a pastry brush But I usually don't do that So then you bake this at 375 for 30 minutes Then it'll be done if you did the bottom crust pre-cooked if not you need to then cover it the whole thing with aluminum foil and cook for an additional 30 to 35 minutes or until both the top and bottom crusts are fully cooked through. And then you can chill it for, or not chill it, but let it sit um, to kind of firm up for 15 to 30 minutes before serving. So here's the pie fresh out of the oven. Looks really good. I'll show y'all when we cut into it after it's rested. And then.